name is Pablo, I'm a researcher on climate and disasters and I'm working with the humanitarian sector trying to put knowledge to use, trying to see how we can make better decisions based on what is known. Uh, I totally agree with a lot of what has been said, but if your mission is to save lives, trial and error leads to deaths that you're accountable for. Uh, so it's not easy to just experiment, right? So for that reason, among others, we have started designing games games that capture the essential elements of these complex systems that we're dealing with, uh, climate, society, vulnerable people, decisions at different layers, different levels, trade-offs between uh, collaboration and competition, short-term and long-term, uh, risk-taking versus uh, risk aversion. There's all sorts of stuff, uh, feedbacks, delays, uh, thresholds. All those things are very difficult to convey in a PowerPoint, where I talk, you listen, and then you walk away. So what we're going to do is to play. Before we play, I'm going to give you these little piece of papers. Can you please circulate? Um, these are some of the concepts that I want you to be thinking about uh, as you move about. And in this game, you're going to make decisions with your feet, okay? You're going to answer questions by moving about. We're going to have teams, but your decisions are individual. So any one person has to make choices based on that person's preferences. You are the only boss of yourself which is not exactly true in most of our organizations, but for the purpose of the game, let's accept the rules. A very important ground rule, the game is a game, is not reality. It's a simplified representation of reality. So if I say that in the game you lose three or you win two, and you think it should be five or, or, or one and a half, sorry. <laughs> accept the ground rules as they are. We can talk about modifying later, but for now, this is what it is. So what will happen in this game? In this game, you are, each one of you is a humanitarian worker, a Red Cross person. And you have scarce resources, time, money, staff, volunteers. And there's only three kinds of things you can do. You can, for the coming season, invest in protection against flood. Too much rain. Come to this side. This side means protection against flood, okay? So you are going to start somewhere in the center. These tables delimit the territory for one team, a second team, and a third team, okay? So people in this team who want to invest in protection against flood have to come to this side, clearly to this side. Touch the wall, touch the chair. If you're standing around here, it's not clear, I make a decision on what you decided. <laughs> if you want to invest against drought, you go to the other end. Here's a bucket that will remain here because you want to collect rain, okay? You want to be prepared for the absence of enough rain. So you come over here, that means you've invested in drought, preparedness. If you think that it's better to invest in other stuff, HIV AIDS prevention, regional development, literacy, uh, hygiene, all sorts of other stuff that are not so sensitive to climate, then you stay in the center. Flood preparedness, drought preparedness, other investment. I hereby introduce you the rain. Rain is outside of our control. Based on past experience, we know that roughly one out of six years there's too much rain. This six represents too much rain. Okay? If you're protected on this side, too much rain, no problem. Nothing changes. If you're not protected, too much rain means trouble. Trouble means you lose three performance points. In this game, these are not peanuts, they are performance points that you may win or lose, okay? So, if you are seeking protection and that disaster happens, no change. If you're not protected against that disaster, you lose three performance points. Everyone starts with one. Okay? Now if you're here and there is no disaster, for example, you're all a three, that's nice rain, 
then you gain one performance point, okay? If you're protected, you gain one performance point. But if you didn't invest in protection, you gain more, you gain two, okay? Because there's a sacrifice. If you invest in protection, you're giving up something else. So here's the one slide that matters to you. Whoops. There we go. If you seek no protection and there's no disaster, meaning you're standing here and there's no disaster, no problem, you gain two. If you seek no protection and the disaster happens, you lose three. If you seek protection, either of flood, on, or drought, and there's no disaster, you gain only one. If you seek protection and the disaster that happens is the one that you're protected against, you're safe, you lose nothing, no change. And finally, if you seek protection against drought, but there's a flood, too bad, <laughs> you lose three, okay? If you are confused, welcome to our world, okay? <laughs> That's the way it is. In this game, you're going to have chances for peer-to-peer -peer learning. If you don't know what are the consequences of this or that, ask around. Your colleagues may help. Once again, <laughs> peanuts for the development community. <laughs> and you have one minute to make a decision. The strategy seems to me to be you have to build up. You have to build up three. You build up three peanuts. The minute you have three peanuts, everybody gets in the middle. No, 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 no one even made it. To protect, you have to invest something, right? So yeah, protect and you're safe. But if you haven't protected, so maybe you know you've used it for something else, like education or health or whatever. What about a drought strategy? Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Oh, 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 I said stop. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay? Because the rain will come, and if you keep discussing and discussing, it will be too late for your decisions. One person jumped before I got to the stop. So maybe it was the right decision, maybe it was the wrong decision. Here comes the rains. Okay. Drought. You only have one, you're out. You only have one, you're out. Oh, everyone is out, isn't it? <laughs> so, we have run our practice rounds with what we call a probability distribution function that is based on observations of the past. In the past, in this country, roughly one out of six was a drought and roughly one out of six was a flood. But guess what? The climate is changing, isn't it? <laughs> So I hereby introduce you to my high-tech new probability distribution function of disasters under a changing climate device. Okay? This is one of those little things that uh, veterinarians put on dogs or cats so that they don't uh, lick their surgery. Uh, okay? Now, this is going to determine the outcome of the rainy season. If it, I will throw it up like this, spinning, so I don't have any remote control to decide what will happen. No authority. If this falls on the side, like this, it means no disaster. Okay? If it falls like this, it means flood, too much rain. Okay? You want to seek protection. If it falls like this, it means drought. Too little rain, you're trying to go to collect water, okay? So the rules of the game are the same, but now we start playing for real. There will be individual decisions. The individual decisions will aggregate to a collective choice, and there will be winners and losers, team winners, team losers, individual winners, individual losers. You have about uh, three to four minutes to make your decisions before the rainy season starts. No, the climate has changed. Go for it. Just keep one. Just keep one. But is he going to throw the dice as well? Just keep one. Will he throw the dice as well or no? Just keep one. Just keep one. Just keep one. Just keep one.
I think the probability of falling like this and this is higher than being in the middle, right? So either I think, I think going like this is, is higher. Yeah. It becomes heavier. It gets narrow. Narrow. We're not heavier. thinking about the probabilities at all. Yeah. Thinking about how things fall. Yeah. yeah. Do you know that drought is going to be more. Why don't we do it once? No, 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 no. Why don't we do it once? Why don't we do it once? Five. Four. Three. Okay, we've got to do it once. Two. One. Stop. So we again see a pattern of a little bit more risk aversion. Makes sense, right? Now, of course, there's a relationship between climate and development. Because if you weren't so averse to risk, you could invest more in development, accumulate wealth faster, et cetera. So this is flood, this is drought, this is no problem. No problem. <laughs> so you guys get two peanuts, everybody else gets one. All right, you're alive, you can stay. Two peanuts, out, sit down. It's out. Three, oh no, they pay, they pay the three. No, we're not actually gay. They've got to protect us, though. Depending on our colleagues to protect us. Collaboration, that's what we're looking for now. Okay, we have some who went for flood protection, some who went for no trouble, some who went for drought protection. Am I right to assess that there's about the same in each side? Okay. So I am surprised because in previous playing of this game, based on one data point, everyone flocked to that data point. So you are a little bit more cautious. There we go. Flood. You're fine. You pay three. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> okay. So, the, may I have your attention, please? How many people have survived? Three in that team, two in this team, three in this team, correct? Okay. So, in just three seasons, we went from, I don't know, about 40 to about nine survivors. I now want to have some reflection, right? We have two minutes for reflection. I want to hear your question aloud. Oh, um, Quickly, please. Well, I lost, but my, I hedged my bet since I was in the drought area. I hedged my bet by, bet by eating up two peanuts. <laughs> That, that way, even though I'm in a drought condition, I'm not hungry anymore. But the question I had, uh, and this is something that Pablo and I have been worrying about for quite some time, which is that given that individuals bias, given the experience uh, and given the probabilities bias their actions like we saw just now, how does a humanitarian institution such as Red Cross position itself if there was a probability of a forecast of rain, no rain, or flood, or a drought? How does it mobilize resources and prepositions them in order to respond to such a condition? And if such a condition is not realized, what are the ramifications of further humanitarian assistance downstream? And this is something that we need to reflect on a little bit. So let me share with you one story precisely about that question. 2008, May, a fax arrives to the regional office for West and Central Africa of the International Federation of Red Cross Red Crescent Societies. The fax has a forecast, a seasonal forecast, that says on May 15th, based on sea surface temperatures and, and in many other uh, technical variables, we anticipate that for the coming three months, June, July, August, if you define an extreme event as that having 15% chance of occurring on any uh, given season, the probability of extreme precipitation occurring in these coming three months is enhanced from 15% to between 40 and 50%. That's what arrived. Youssef, can you wave your hand? Youssef, le actually let me come over here so the camera can see Youssef. <coughs> Youssef was the director, sorry, the dire disaster management coordinator for the regional office in Dakar. He was in charge of Mauritania, where there was a coup d'etat, trouble. 
Chad, where there were refugees from Sudan, trouble. Uh, Congo Brazzaville, where there were floods, trouble. Trouble meaning there's trouble now. And you don't have enough resources to deal with those troubles now. And some facts comes with some incomprehensible stuff. How many of you would move in any of the two directions based on that forecast? And it's not just about moving in that direction or not, it's how much you do. What will you do? So would you like to say a few of the things you did and why? OK, I think the, the first things we did is saying comparative issues. We were working before based on potential disaster. Every year we say, what will happen next year? Then it could be drought, it could be the floods, it could be locust invasion, civil troubles. But we were putting all these things as equal probability. And we're even not using this. We just say potential disaster. And now we got something saying, for the next season, it's probably this what will happen. This is the science-based disaster risk management starting coming in. Then, of course, then we started the interaction, knowing these guys uh, called Pablo, Martin, and other guys coming around us. And then we start the interaction with them. We say, hey, are you sure that it will happen? They say, no, I'm not sure. It's just a probability. And then how should we build and invest resources based on probability? Then we started saying, OK, we already have a contingency planning, which means let's prepare for the next coming disaster. Now we will reorient our contingency planning based on the prob probability and the forecast. This is one. The second thing is saying what kind of uh, activities we can undertake without being losing if the probability does not happen. And this is what we call no regret approach. It means in terms of uh, positioning stocks, it's always uh, appropriate to have stocks close to communities, uh, training people. And then we went a bit so something more, uh, more uh, risky, well, but not very costing, saying, OK, the expert of floods are living in those countries. We need to have visas prepared for in case of they have to move in 24 hours. This kind of thing, we started building this kind of what we call now climate risk management. But at this moment, we, we were discovering and we also make some faults on which we build some success later. Thank you. Now, one very important thank you, Yusuf, for that. And Yusuf is no longer uh, with the Red Cross family, so we lament the loss. But he's helping strategize across Africa on climate risk management. So hopefully we can do more. Before we are kicked out, key lessons. One thing he didn't mention uh, is that Yusuf and team launched the first ever emergency appeal. It's a mechanism to ask for a lot of money, uh, which is usually used like there's people dead or dying. Can we get some money to save some more lives? This was the first ever emergency appeal based on a seasonal forecast of what may or may not happen in three months. Understandably, donors didn't know what to do with it. So they only sent about 10% of what we asked about six weeks too late. Uh, I'm, this is a caricature. There are many fine details. The issue is that it's a policy question. We need to think collectively, humanitarian sector, climate experts, governments, donors, communities at risk, farmers organizations, everyone. There needs to be a dialogue, a policy dialogue of how are we going to deal with changing probabilities if some bunch of scientists tell us that the chances of a flood this season is probably 50 or 60 percent, but for a farmer, for a Red Cross worker, for a government, for a donor, looks like a normal day. Okay, so that's what we hope to accomplish. If you want to have conversations about this, come talk to Yusef or myself. If you want to consider using games, this game was designed specifically to convey this lesson. And because there's complexity, we're designing games specifically to address whatever need you have. Let's give it a try. Thanks for your attention. And now I have to defer to our facilitator because we're running out. Thank you so much. Thank you.